Hey guys, welcome to the second part of our Titan X project. In the last video we took a look at the card itself, on the technical specifications, also on um, how does the stock cooler perform, how are the clocks, how can we even overclock the card on stock, uh, the performance in the Witcher 3. In this video we will mount the EK water cooler on the card, the full cover water block. Um, originally I planned to also test the card with the water block in this video but then I figured out that it's just way too much for one video so I split it up and the next video will come next week um, when I will show you how the card performs with the water cooler and how high we, we can clock the card after um, applying the power mod and also the water block. So let's take a look at uh, the water block. So this is the stuff we need for um, the preparation of the card. So of course you have the Titan X here. This is um, the EK water blocks cooler and this is the actually the nickel plexi cooler. I already unpacked this one. Here you have all the gear from the cooler. You have the screws and the thermal pads. You need some scissors to cut those pads later. You need a screwdriver to remove all the stuff from the GPU, the backplate. Also you need one of those small, I don't know how it's called, maybe hex key and um, you need some liquid metal. We will use that later for the power target mod. So let's get started. So first of all you have to remove all those small screws here for the back plate from the GPU, also some small screws at the front. You still bend me from the inside out Ultimately you will fall And only I will feel we had it all you can already remove the back plate. So now you can see all those small screws here and that's where we, where we will need this tool to unscrew those. So we just remove the screws of the GPU cooler itself first and then we will use the hex key or whatever it's called to remove the rest of the screws to remove the cooler. So after you removed all those screws, make sure you really removed all of them. Also don't forget the ones in the front. We will take off um, the PCB from the cooler. So now we can take a look at the card itself. You can see the GPU here, surrounded by 12 GB of memory. You can see the voltage supply for the GPU here it should be an 8-phase uh, voltage supply, which comes from an 8-pin and 6-pin connector. Also, the memory uh, supply is on top here, which is covered by the thermal pads currently. Also, PLL voltage on the bottom. Also here, this one and this resistor and the small resistor on the bottom, which say 5MO or 5M0 could actually be. Um, those are the shunt resistors which we will short in a bit um, to elim eliminate the power target. Another thing I would like to point out um, is the GPU voltage controller which is on the back here. So we will um, later modify this one, add some um, variable resistor, also remove one resistor from here, SMD resistor, uh, to make sure the voltage is not changing anymore because currently uh, you have the VID table so whenever you um, adjust something in the OS like frequency the voltage will also um, change according to the power target. So the first thing we do is removing all those small thermal pads. What, I'd, what I like to do is um, to put them back on the stock cooler otherwise it's easy to lose them and maybe you have to um, mount the stock cooler back one day, so better place them directly in the right position so you don't lose them. Fresh like me, come and get, come and come and get. 
So before mounting the GPU cooler, we will do the power mod. So for the power mod, you have to apply liquid metal on this one, on the small resistor here, on the small resistor here, and also on the small resistor on the bottom. This will unlock the power target and should, even um, on high frequency, should give you a max of around 70 or 80 uh, percent power target on load. So this is how the card looks like after applying the liquid metal on uh, the three SMD resistors. A layer with this kind of thickness should be fine. And now we will apply the water cooler to, to the card. Um, this is Thermal Grizzly um, Hydro Nod actually. So I will use this one um, for the GPU. Just apply a thin layer on the GPU. It works very well with the applicator which is mounted on top. So this is the full cover block from EK Waterblocks. It will be important that the left side will have a perfect contact with the thermal pads for the VRMs and this area with thermal pads for the memory and this area will have contact with the GPU. So those are the thermal pads from EK Waterblocks. Just remove the blue foil on top of the thermal pads and then just place them um, around the GPU on the memory and on top of the chokes and on the right side of the VRMs. Hold everything together and carefully place it on top of the box. At, at least that's the way I do it. For me that's very easy to mount the cooler. Now take the screws from EK Waterblocks, make sure you have those plastic washers underneath the screw and then just start um, around the GPU itself and continue with the rest of the screws. So now, now the card is finished, mounting the water cooler. Um, depending on what kind of uh, GPU configuration you will have, you might uh, have to consider adding two of those here, either on the back or on the front, um, depending on where you want to mount your um, fittings. And I will remove this part to use the quad extender from EK. So as I mentioned before, that's it for this video. In the next video, we will test the card with a water block to see how high we can push the card after mounting the water block and also applying the power mod. In that video, I will also give you a closer insight on the water chiller I'm using because I'm not using one of those um, cheap um, water chillers you can find in a store in the normal uh, water cooling stores. It's um, a handmade chiller from an um, overclocker here in Germany. Um, but yeah, we will take a look at that in the next video. Until that. Enjoy your weekend, see you soon.